Hello everybody, uh, my name is Stefan Chapman and I'm the Vice President at Euro Petroleum Consultants. Uh, we are an independent consultancy active in the oil, gas and petrochemical sectors and have been involved in project management and implementation for the past 25 years. We've also, during that time, organized industry-recognized conferences on a variety of topics and uh, in different regions around the globe. And we are very proud to be organizing the first Energy and Sustainability Forum, ESF 2021. And the forum will be focusing on decarbonizing the downstream industry. Today, I'm very honored to be joined by one of the forum's keynote speakers, Marco Villa. Marco is the Chief Operating Officer at Tickneep Energies, a leading engineering and technology company focused on energy transition with big ambitions in hydrogen, sustainable chemistry and CO2 management. Uh, we are delighted to be able to catch up with Marco today ahead of the conference and be able to discuss and exchange with him on some of the key topics in the industry in its journey to a more sustainable future. So Marco, good morning. Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Congratulations on the new role. Maybe I could ask you to start off by telling us a bit more about Technip Energies and the role the new company will play in energy transition. Okay. Uh, thank you. Firstly, good morning to you. Uh, thanks for the congratulations. And uh, so, uh, as you know, in February, we have uh, launched uh, the new company Technip Energies that uh, it's a leading engineering and technology company for the energy transition. With our broad offering of uh, project capabilities, uh, technologies, uh, products and services, uh, we break boundaries to accelerate the journey to a low carbon society. Our ambition is to position Technip Energies as a world leader in energy engineering and technology, serving in particular all our major energy client toward energy transition project to help our customers to achieve their net zero target. In this area, we are focusing our efforts on low carbon LNG, sustainable chemistry, decarbonization, and carbon-free energy solution, which all will play a major role in the global energy transition. Just to give you some uh, main data, we are talking about 15,000 people, uh, 6 billion turnover, and we are entering this new energy uh, in, you, in this new challenge uh, of energy transition with uh, a strong backlog and as well as a very solid uh, balance sheet uh, that will enable us to tackle all the challenges that we have in front of us. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. It's definitely an exciting and challenging journey that we're embarking on uh, the energy transition. And I think uh, Technip Energies is well equipped to assisting as you said, all the major players on that journey. Um, what impact do you believe these events of 2020 have had on our industry's pivot to sustainability? So, uh, thanks for the question. We will not even ignore but as well forget the 2020 because Definitely. it was really um, a very uh, challenging year but uh, when we talk about sustainability you know sustainability has been a major component of our industries and for example at Technip Energies sustainability has been one of our foundational beliefs for many years now but the global pandemic has been an accelerator toward greater ESG consideration in the way we will do business. There are valuable lessons learned that we have collected during this period, and we have learned this through COVID-19 pandemic. 
we have learned that we were able to successfully adapt the way we were to ensure business continuity. This is the most important issues. But we have learned as well that uh, health of our people, our economy, and the environment are closely linked. And we collectively need to embrace DSG agenda as part of our economy recovery from all the challenges we have faced during the pandemic. At Technip Energies, ESG and sustainability is a key priority for us. And we want to be recognized as a reference in this area. We have already started materially, materially assessment to define ESG and sustainability issues that matter most to our business and our st uh, stakeholders. With our first year of activities, we will launch our sustainability roadmap that we will integrate into our business strategy. Every year, we intend to issue an annual sustainability report and scorecard to measure and track our progress in ESG and sustainability. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I totally agree with that point of view on, on the importance of sustainability and also how everything is closely linked uh, within the industry and the way we live and the way we we want things to to go on in the future with regards to business to people to health uh, and society as a whole i'd like to move on onto another important topic a lot has been said about the potential game changing uses of hydrogen and uh, Technip Energies has identified hydrogen as an important uh, growth market. Um, at some of our recent advisory meetings for our conferences, a common theme has been that despite its potential as a next generation fuel, green hydrogen uh, is not yet economically uh, viable and hydrogen costs in general will need to come down if it is to revolutionize the global energy system. In your opinion, how can companies develop a viable business case around green hydrogen? Is that possible? Uh, it's it's uh, a very interesting uh, challenge for us and, uh, you know, for everyone, but mainly uh, for us. As you know, we are a, a world leader in hydrogen having uh, delivered our proprietary steam reforming technology to over 270 plant globally, representing over 35% of the global installed base. When we combine our great gray hydrogen heritage with our leading carbon capture solutions, we have the in-house capability to fully engineer and construct blue hydrogen plant. And we have already over 50 references for carbon capture installations on hydrogen plant, many of which are retrofit into existing plant to become hydrogen with the CO2 capture. And on this one, it's very, very important, even the strategic alliance we have uh, with uh, Shell on uh, CanSolve technology. That is a proven proprietary amine technology to capture CO2. As far as the green hydrogen, of course, considering our positioning as clear, uh, just as plain on hydrogen, our ambition is to act as a leading technology integrator in the APC service provider for green hydrogen projects. But talking generally, uh, broadly on hydrogen. Hydrogen is the mostly widely used industrial gas in downstream today. If you consider, we use it as a stock in ammonia production, in petroleum refining, in methanol production. 
And looking at the future, we believe the hydrogen holds significant promise as a clean energy career. We and uh, uh, specialists estimate that uh, hydrogen has the potential to reduce by 50% the global CO2 emission by replacing the use of fossil fuel to clean hydrogen production, reducing the carbon footprint in power generation, transportation, heating and power for building, industry energy, and industry feedstock. So at the end, hydrogen is the, therefore a key enabler to reach net zero target in the long term and has the potential to be as important in the energy mix as natural gas is today. It's clear that historically green hydrogen projects have stalled and challenging economics, you know. But I think two aspects will be critical for the industry's development. Firstly, governmental policy. Importantly, the momentum here is strong. And we have seen many strong pledges for green hydrogen from governmental all around the world, including major economies within the European community, UK, Japan, China, Australia. And secondly, the cost of electronic hydrogen are expected to fall rapidly in the coming years, benefiting from innovation, continuous improvement in technology innovation, improvement in the supply chain, and economics of scale. We are ready to, uh, to play a significant role on it, and this is the reason for which we have uh, invested as last year as a strategic partner in one of the first tier one electrolyzer supplier, McPhee. We are invested together with Chart Industry that is specialized on equipment development. And we will bring our support on integrating the offering and our R&D expertise. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely agree that there is a willingness and a drive to fully develop and utilize the potential with, with hydrogen. Uh, and we. I think in the coming years, we will see that. There is another topic of great importance uh, and one that we've been hearing a lot in the media and also within the industry, and that is circular economy and the different strategies. Uh, we've seen a number of companies that adopt high yield circular economy strategies. Why do you think this is so important and what is the value proposition and commercialization status of plastic conversion technologies? Firstly, we cannot uh, anymore put on the market thousands of tons of plastic without having a solution to recycle it. Yes. In the same time, the world cannot live without plastic material especially on the short term. So uh, we are fully engaged on this journey, being a leader in petrochemical industries. And we have the duties to mobilize our competencies, skill and technologies to bring solutions to the market to recycling plastics. And on this domain, we are pushing several initiatives. We have several promising partnerships that provide us access to recycling technologies. These include, for example, the Infinia technology with BP, which enable, enable circularity for difficult to recycling plastic waste. We are as well setting up a club of pyrolysis technology owner, as we are, in order to ensure the compatibility of pyrolysis oil coming out 
from their plastic recycling plant with together with the cracking unit that we have built as Technip Energies with our own technologies. And this represents almost 50% of the installed capacity in the world. So thus, we are working hardly to close the loop by connecting recycling processes with petrochemical-based processes to manufacture plastic. We are also supporting innovative uh, recycling technology development by startups to bring them to the market as quick as, as possible. For example, we have uh, doing with the Carbios for the PTA, uh, PTA for the PET recycling. This is using an uh, enzymatic route and then uh, as you maybe know, uh, a few days ago, we have announced to the market that we are uh, forming a joint venture with IBM and Armour uh, to build and commercialize a new recycling framework and circular economy, always for the polyethylene tereftalic, tereftalate, so the PET, which is an important commodity that is used for manufacture of uh, synthetic fibers, uh, plastic bottles, uh, and uh, rigid packaging. So uh, this is uh, a new important journey, as I said, that we are taking on this uh, circular economy, uh, combining uh, our technology competence, technology development, engineering study, and uh, licensing uh, capabilities. Uh, and together with the Armon, uh, their global textile supply chain capabilities. In addition, last but not least, uh, just to give you an overall picture, uh, we are also developing the, the route to a new bio-based and biodegradable plastic. And together with our uh, technology partner, uh, namely Futero and uh, Sulzer, we are commercializing a technology to manufacture PLA, that is plastic acid, a bio-based and biodegradable plastic. That's, that's very interesting. And we're seeing a lot of activity in, in, in the sector, in circular economy. And also we've seen, especially in Europe, we've seen some, some existing plants are being uh, converted into uh, bio refineries and also plastic, uh, plastic recycling plants. Looking at our industry, it's a uh, it's a mature industry, the downstream sector. Um, we have existing assets uh, with differing in complexity and also differing in age. How do you think our industry can build its options for the future using the assets it already has? And if I can add, would the approach differ from region to region around the globe? But this is, a, the, uh, as you correctly said, this is the big challenges. Uh, and um, today, this journey has been accelerated. Uh, don't forget that we have always paid a lot of attention uh, on how to move forward uh, to a greener economy, because uh, uh, today uh, we have an alliance with the Nest uh, Oil, the Finnish company, that is the world leader on biorefinery. We have already built uh, and completed uh, seven, eight years ago, the first two refinery, first generation uh, Rotterdam and uh, Singapore. And now we are currently expanding uh, the Singapore refinery to second generation uh, biofuel. Because, you know, the world is changing. It was biodiesel, now it's biofuel, uh, it's uh, jet fuel and more and more. So uh, what you are saying, this is uh, the very important uh, challenging uh, of the assets that uh, they have, you know, uh, for sure uh, 
there will be uh, some old assets, for example, in the refinery that it will be converted to bio refinery. Uh, it would be for sure a strong uh, uh, stream of investment to reduce the CO2 uh, emission of the existing assets. And uh, this is more uh, what I'm seeing in the short term. So in the short term, I I'm seeing huge concentration of everyone to uh, put in place all the mean to reduce the CO2 emission. And for sure on this one, as you, we said before, blue hydrogen will be an important component. And this is the first path, the first stage that will open the path to, let's say, more a more uh, longer journey that is coming to uh, green hydrogen. So for sure. Existing one, CO2 reduction emission is the target. When is uh, to all the two emission for certain refineries to move forward to bio refinery? Of course, it's even uh, investing on uh, assets, uh, uh, for example, on reducing CO2, integrating refinery and petrochemicals that we are seeing. And uh, in parallel, this be the open uh, the open path uh, to building a really carbon uh, free solution. So it's in a parallel uh, it's a parallel journey. So we cannot switch from one day to another one. Uh, all the existing uh, assets uh, we cannot destroy all the existing assets uh, to build all the new one. Yes, for sure. If you could elaborate a little bit more on what you believe to be the, the short to mid-term key success factors for our industry in regards to reducing its carbon emissions. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the first actions that uh, everyone, client, countries uh, have taken. And um, it's very important because first, you know, for each uh, asset, uh, there is an assessment that it's needed to be done. In addition, even for new investment, this assessment at the early phase to identify to identify carbon impact and how it can be reduced. On this one, for example, we have uh, our consulting subsidiary Genesis have their own carbon assessment tool that can they use both on concept and preliminary studies for the new investment and to analyze the, the existing one, how to reduce it. This is called GenCat. It's uh, an industry leading carbon assessment tool that provides an assessment of direct and indirect emission through all the chain, you know, from, for the new investment, for procurement, assets construction and operation. And to the existing one, to the access and to the existing operation. And one carbon capture has been measured with the main uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission. It's important immediately to put in place an action plan for uh, abatement need to be set up. And this can include several solutions. Carbon capture, uh, utilization and storage implementation of better e efficiency energy processes to reduce the carbon emissions per ton or final product. Start to use largely free carbon fuel. For sure, it's not only hydrogen, even ammonia will play a role to feed the main generator power system. Either standalone or blending with gas. And then we need even to put immediately on board all to take all the advantages of the renewable fast growth in the world ecosystem to supply the industry. Yes, I agree. 
thank you very much for that. We have time for, for one final question, if I may. Um, it's a slightly different question. Um, peering into the crystal ball, as we say, in, in a time characterized by uncertainty and change, uh, what do you think the 2030 refiner or pet chem producer will look like? And what are the big ticket items we will see the industry invest this coming decade? So uh, I think that uh, this is uh, another important domain with everybody. It's, uh, it's a matter of a lot of discussion and interaction and study with the, with the customer. Uh, I think that we can observe three main trends in uh, the overall, let's say, downstream refining sector, which will continue to, for me, to play a big role in shaping the future of the industries. The first trend is that uh, there is more and more a better integration of refining and petrochemicals. We have seen a growing number of refineries diversifying their production toward petrochemicals derivate with greater consideration on environment concern. But beyond this synergy with petrochemical, we are also witnessing a better evaluation of the molecules, a growing consideration as well on circular economy, on energy transition teams, and as well as an acceleration of digitalization. Secondly, energy transition will shape the future of the industries, surely, and reducing the carbon footprint, as we said before, is a major concern for refining and the entire downstream uh, sector. This uh, we will, uh, will result in making of a strong commitment by all and the deployment of project and initiative in favor of carbon neutrality. And this uh, transition will include uh, several components, among which uh, we can find, as we said, energy efficiency, biofuel, biochemicals, hydrogen, CO2 management solution, and a circular economy with plastic uh, recycling. And thirdly, we see a main trend that is very important as well in digital transformation. We can see new ecosystem and digital platform that connect facilities to collect and analyze data, optimize remote operation and maintenance, by enhancing, of course, the safety of people and the infrastructure. In the meantime, does meeting the main challenges operational performance. To this end, for example, we have designed a dedicated digital solution covering the improvement of refining margin, but as well energy performance, CO2 emission in connection with the team of energy transition. And all of this is based on a secure transfer of information with user-friendly interface, personalized dashboard, and it offers diagnostic capability and immediate support from our specialist to focus on it. So digital will be another enabler that uh, thanks to this capability to uh, link in a common platform, a detailed analysis operation that will help us on the journey to uh, uh, reducing CO2 carbon emission and increase energy efficiency. Yes, there, there are definitely a lot of components uh, that will be involved, that, that will come into play. And um, I'm convinced that our industry with the expertise, the know-how and the drive is, is fully equipped to embark on this uh, journey, uh, this energy transition, and, and do it successfully. Um, so, Marco, thank you very much for your time today. 
It was a, a real pleasure and very insightful to be able to discuss and exchange with you on some of the important industry topics and trends. Um, I look uh, forward to further developing the discussion at ESF 2021 uh, later in the year and uh, hopefully before long to be able to meet in person. Uh, in the meantime, uh, stay safe and stay well. And thank you once again for today. No, thank you to you. Delight to be part of this interview. Looking forward uh, to the conference. <laughs>